told you the other day, a program on BBC Home Club in Scots Gaelic. With asking the characters, uh, there is a whole can of worms, it looks like I'm going to have to go for the B. So, the problem. Keep in track of import and output encoding. Basically, if people feed you stuff in, hopefully you get fake, but not always. You get it in ISO Latin 1, you get it in Cyrillic, you get it in Chinese. <coughs> and they want to output in some other format. Not losing the information in the middle. And, and rather importantly for this, get the head around the difference between characters and bytes. Now, characters and bytes can be really quite important. That's character. Um, in Unicode, it's actually code point 0024. And you can represent it in UTF-8, which is the step one of the more common encoders in Unicode, as 1 byte x24. Which is great. One character equals one byte. It would be nice if it was all like that. It was. It was nice. <laughs> That is. Well done, I <laughs> um, so, instantly we lose any segments or one to one mapping between byte count and character count, um, which makes life somewhat entertaining. So, here we go we have an input stream, each byte in some encoding or other, for the sake of argument, it's isolated one, say. So, we can decode it. What we really want now is some nice magic <coughs> sort of character based representation that can cope with any character set and throw it in um, and count by character, not by byte, so we can ask it how many characters in this string, if that was string that is a dollars and euro symbol, and it won't say four. Um, and then when we're done, we can spin it back out to the outside world. Like so. And, you know, if you guys really want the encoder module, which is there for exactly that. Call decode and your input stream, you carry from bytes in your characters, and conversely, given your characters in your internal representation, you encode it and you get bytes. This is the whole thing. <laughs> 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 Except, well, it represents all encodings, it's got multiple character supports, for example, length <coughs> should count properly. Sadly, work like that. But it's, it's not far off. You've got the encoding <coughs> running really well. It's probably a 12 5 8 and a half. Incidentally, if you're not using 5, if you're still using 5 6, <laughs> uh, the 20th century call it like Pearl Bash. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> there are solutions for 5 6 and earlier. Don't use them. Upgrade. Please upgrade. So, we have a character based internal representation. Pearl has one. It's magic. All the string functions know about it. It's incredibly agnostic. In fact, yay! <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. There's your little diagram. But, come back with me in the midst of time. <laughs> to a time when men were men, MST was still MST, and people wrote Pearl with no regard for encoding at all. You took flight scene on your input stream, and whatever happy encoding the system happened, happened to have set your system up in, you encoded them, you stored them in flight scene on machine, they set the encoding, and when it came to output, you outputted it there. But people are still doing this! Which means our holy grail is getting a little bit tarnished because we still have to fucking well support them. So, that lovely, lovely, beautiful, uh, it's magic internal coding we had, um, suffers a little, sadly. If all the characters we get in that magic internal representation are represented in the local machine data the character set, we use that. If not, we use UTF-8. And in theory, this is all transparent to you. Which, if ever there was a famous last set of words, those are it. So, for example, 
Let's make some lovely new GFA characters. Let's encode them with our encoding. And we get Black's and Mother's own encoding. Cool, fine. We'll do the same thing with characters that happen to be represented with machine bytes using code on those, and then code does all the magic for us because it knows the difference between the two, and we get lots of outside encoding. Brilliant, fantastic. So what happens if we get one of those on one of those on some bright sparkles and ketamine them? That's fine too, because because Pearls is <coughs> about this. It goes, oh, better come over those to UTF then. So it does. And the end result, once you come to encode it, and the end result in our internal representation now is on the ETF. Really, if we do encode that, life is good. Uh, ish. So, I've got, this is where things get wrong. Because if you start forgetting to encode or decode, you're in big trouble. So, let's take some machine bytes. Let's output them without bothering to encode with content using the encoding UTF 8. Wrong. What if we happen to encode those in ISO Latin 1? Should that happen to be our machine encoding? Right! Fantastic! Great. But what about this, 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 this one, which is represented in terms of these UTF-8 characters? Let's output it without encoding using UTF-8. Fantastic! It works! Great! What happens if we output it in Latin 1? Yeah. <laughs> um, Yahoo Eurosport. Try to turn on UTF-8 handling properly using um, without bothering to find all the places where they've forgotten to call in code. There were some very interesting pages as a result with all poor possible combinations of this, um, resulting in pretty much that reaction. And uh, it's actually worse because you can't tell what you're holding in your hand. It would be really, really nice if you could say, you know, is this a UTF-8 stream? or a machine by stream. Well, you sort of can. Because unfortunately that doesn't do what you think it means. It doesn't say it doesn't it, what you really like to say is have I encoded this string? It doesn't. What it actually says is if I've encoded this string so it bytes UTF8 is false. <coughs> if I haven't encoded this string, yeah, even if the <laughs> UTF8, the value function returns false. If I haven't encoded the string and it's represented internally as UTF8 characters, it's true. If I haven't encoded the string and it's represented as machine bytes, it's false. No, you can't tell the top and bottom cases above. However, provided you use your head and to think about what you're doing, you can get around this. Um, there is a lovely encode.pm, which basically allows you to say, yeah, no, I know these bytes, I'm about to output them, I'd like to carry this, please. Which is great. There's also the free argument form of open, uh, which is very specific to allow you to say, this is a file handle of bullet blade, as you pass bullets through it, please encode them as you see it. Sorry, as you pass characters through it, please encode them as you see it. Uh, there's also Bimo on the file which pretty much does the same thing in terms of the first lap mode on the file handle. Uh, side note on encodings, uh, there are two representations of UTF-8 in encode.pm. Lowercase UTF-8 means, well, I think it's UTF-8, fingers crossed. Uh, capitals UTF-8 actually means, and I will now check this for validity as well. Um, the latter, needless to say, is down slightly slower than the former. Um, and Pearl I.O. layers similar, similarly provides you with that and that, which are pretty much the same thing. The other big pitfall, that one doesn't do what it does. That simply says, my source code contains UTF-A true constants. And nothing else. So, the other problem with that, of course, is not all the code you write is yours. Every now and then, you have to use some third-party modules. Fortunately, things have got better since I first gave this talk. I gave this talk at the Italian Pearl Workshop, uh, and there were a couple of rather key modules that basically required you to roll your own. CGRPF has now currently provided that environment variable. You set that, and it will 
ensure that the um, input parameters you read in are UTF-5 bytes, and it will decode into characters on the way in. Another UP user agent now has a code content, which actually looks at content encoding, and then calls the relevant to encode, and calls decode with the right encoding to give you back characters in Girls Magic Internet representation. Yeah. DBI has this, which is brilliant. Basically, you set your database all the time to UTF-8, and everything just happens perfectly. Everything you get back from your DBI requests is um, Perl return characters. Everything that you pass is Perl return characters. You might have to the database in the right way. Uh, unfortunately, for those of us who have to pass our SS to the life, XML with XML actually does the right thing. Um, again, it looks at encodings in the XML header and gives you bytes to keep your character properly. Uh, in summary, this is actually quite a short talk, although it's more a rap than a talk. But um, in summary, um, the, the best way by far of handling this problem, as soon as you get bytes from outside, decode using decode, bin mode on, on the file handle, free arc open, the support that the module is given to provide you. As long as it's whizzing around inside your system, treat it, treat it as characters in Perl's internal representation. Just before you output them, and no sooner, <coughs> encode to your desired output encoding, which hopefully your web request or whatever will have given you. That way it lies much less pain, and keep track, preferably by this process plus anything else you need, of whether your strings are currently bullets or characters. It's very hard to tell you have to keep your instrument on straight. And, the big one, never, I've been enough efforts there, I'll show you a few more, rely on the encoding or build internal representation. Just because it looks like it's UTF-8 in the debugger, doesn't mean it's not going to come by you on the arse later. That will improve in 514. <coughs> Promise? Yes. Good. You're going to get rid of machine bytes entirely? No. Oh, shame. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Legend is something that's going to be sensitive. Oh, oh, uh, excuse me, I'm just going to have quite a wibble in the corner of that. <laughs> and, and the other, actually, the, the, other, the other biggie is don't believe it. There is. <laughs> <laughs> All text has an encoding. If you don't treat all text as having an encoding, Someday, that Scottish Gaelic program will come and find you all the <laughs> So, we're back to this lovely diagram. It's, it's so close, you can taste it. If you use your head, it's pretty much there. Uh, but to be honest, and thanks to Joel for this, it's not really the holy grail, it's more the holy fail. Um, and that is pretty much Bill and Unica. Strange idea of what constitutes yes. pretty printed characters. 
I'm in a special <laughs> diet in a fire. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah I, someday I will try to persuade someone to let me out the code from the other character. The, the um, RSS people can't do that, which I is a truly horrendous thing to do. Question uh, back. You didn't mention any ties. Have you ever tried to open a free arc open to a file handle that is tied? Oh. No. <laughs> Should you, I? You can get double encoding. So oh, yes. yes. <laughs> so we said uh, decode as late as possible, or encode as late as possible, but it might be double like encoded if you have tied handles. So take care. Thank you. There's another kind of exciting use case. Um, if you grab a random Servers. You clean up in the case where the HTTP header takes one encoding, the HTML tag then takes another encoding, and the method code tag takes a third encoding. So which one do you leave? Uh, probably not. Yes, this is a very large quantity of special text code in the YAMU. Newspeak file, Otherwise, that's right. We know these people lie. We have, however, managed to beat them up with with a very messy stick enough to tell them to tell us how they lie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people lie. This this is the probably the other slide. Here. People lie. People lie really quite a lot. And unfortunately, sometimes you just have to figure out how they're lying. And I'm a pretty doubt of the code for everything. Well, I hope you can avoid that problem though. You can express your entire HTML document in a, in pure ASCII using the character escapes. Yes, yes, but that requires you to be able to sway your supplier, who is quite often in the wrong country. Um, not speaking your language, <laughs> you're generally supplying your RSS feed, which just happens to fall off the back of their website, out of the goodness of that arm and an agreement negotiated by someone you have no contact with. At that point, you start writing special guest code. <laughs> yep. Yep, is there a way in the encode function to specify the back order of the part? Sorry? Is there a way in the encode function? This type of bike all the while. Ah, pass. What's all the box us here? I don't know nothing about that. I don't know what that one is. If you specify the GFA without the right order, it will only leave the bottom and do the right way. Right. I don't know if you can. I think if there isn't one, if there isn't one and you don't specify one, I think it makes makes a reasonable assumption. Possibly. I haven't tried that. If you do specify the the right order and there is a bond, you will ignore it and you will get the, the your document will start with a zero with non breaking space, which is what the bond is. And which confuses the external bond. Plus at least doesn't want to. Okay, cool, thank you very much. Oh, sorry, one more. Not, not a question, but an observation. If you go back to the previous slide. That one? Yeah, you see the, the decode call and the en encode call. Uh, 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 did I get that wrong? No, 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 it's, that, that's fine, but I'm just going to slip my performance hat on. Feel free! And, and observe that every time you call encode and decode that way, it has to look up the encoding object for the encoding of that name. There are, there is in fact both decode, DTFA, and encode, DTFA. And, and often that encode and decode is inside a tight loop, pulling in lines yeah. from, from a file. So you pay the lookup cost for every single call. If instead you get the encoding object for the encoding you want to use, and then call encode and decode as methods on the object, you avoid the overhead on every call. Indeed, you do. I should, I should, I should add that as an optimization at the next time.